Okay, kia ora everyone. It's Nathan Rose from Cap Gemini here in beautiful Auckland, New Zealand. I am incredibly excited to take you through a massive update that the Dataverse and PowerFX teams delivered over the weekend to low-code PowerFX plugins. For those of you who have been following this, low-code PowerFX plugins dropped at MS Build back in May. And as I have frequently said, watch this space, and I am excited to take you through watch this space. There are some big updates that have just come through. So let me go ahead and share my screen and let's get into this. Now, first things first, you're going to need to install an update to the Dataverse Accelerator app in the Power Platform Admin Center. Once you do this, you're going to see three solutions in your environment. Previously, there were two. There's now a third one called Dataverse Accelerator app that drops in as well. So that's what's going that's what you'll see in your environment once you've installed this salute this update or install the app from scratch. Once you've done that, you go you go ahead and launch the Dataverse Accelerator app and you can see that they've updated the UI a bit. So we've still got the familiar left-hand navigation, we can go home, we can bounce out to MS Learn for documentation, but the main uh, canvas to create uh, instant and automated plugins now lives here in the middle of the page. So it's a nice, nice update, nice look and feel. Um, so let's go ahead, let's dive into instant plugins. This is where the bulk of the changes are, but they're pretty big and I'm pretty excited to show it to you. So this is a plugin I created about an hour ago. And it, what it does is it just creates a sales invoice from a sales order. These are all custom tables that I've created in my, my dev environment. So let's edit this plugin and take a look. Now, the first big change is that we have a new input and output parameter type of entity reference. This means that we can reference a record in Dataverse, either coming into our plugin or coming out of our plugin, which is huge. We couldn't do that previously. When this first launched, we were limited to strings, integers, decimals, all that fun stuff. We've now got entity reference as well. So this is this is pretty big. And what I'm able to do in terms of this demo is I'm able to say, when the user um, triggers this plugin, is I'm able to say, create a sales invoice and drop in the name from the name from the sales order, the amount from the sales order, and the reference of the sales order. So I can link a order to an invoice through this plugin. And I'll show you this in a second. The other big update is we can now control the scope of our instant plugins. Now, previously we were limited to a global scope. So for those of you who are familiar with the Power Automate world, this is where you call an unbound action and go from there. However, sometimes you might not want to do that. Maybe you only want this plugin to run on a contact or an account. You can do that now. This is particularly important as we get into the maker world because we want to, as, as much as we love citizen developers and makers, sometimes we need to protect them from themselves. And so if we only want this plugin to work on a contact or an account, we want to we want to support them in that and we can now do that. So we can now we can control the scope as well. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead, let's test this plugin and see it in action. So I can pop in the name from my record. So let's call this YouTube demo. Uh, what time is it? 6.30 p.m. I need the ID of a record of my sales order. So I'm just going to drop that GUID in here. I'm going to put an amount and then I need, because of this, this record reference, I'm going to put the same GUID as well. And let's go ahead and run the plugin. Now, the first time I click run, I get a failure. This, this seems to happen every time. When I click run again, it, I get a success. And let's come over here to our sales invoices. And we can see that we've created this record via plugin. So that is some of the new features available in instant plugins. Referencing a record, we can bounce back to our sales order here and link it to the sales invoice that we created via plugin. That's something we couldn't do before. And we're able to limit the scope of this plugin 
to this sales order table. So it only runs from this table. So very, very nice update. Now I know what you're all thinking. Does this mean that we can now use call low code plugins from modern commanding? The answer is I'm not sure. I tried this, I can't quite get it to work. In fact, I can't actually quite get these plugins to work from a Canvas app either. And I'm not entirely sure if this is um, just me not quite understanding the syntax um, or from there's some other updates that need to be delivered on the back end to complete the circle. I'll just show you, um, come in here to a Canvas app. So this is me trying to call this, this plugin from a Canvas app. And the error that I'm getting is where I'm trying to pass um, the entity reference. It's saying it's expecting a text value, not a record. I've tried wrapping um, wrapping this in a text uh, text formula, um, no dice. So again, the, it looks like there's a, f a few things that need to be worked out, and I'm not entirely sure if this is just me not understanding it or just some some a few things still still need to be delivered. But it does work in the test canvas here in the Dataverse Accelerator app. So I'm guessing that. Uh, it's probably just me needing to figure out the syntax. But again, really, really cool update. So the other thing I'm going to show you is, uh, is in terms of automated plugins. Now in automated plugins, something that it's, it's easy to miss, but here in the upper right-hand corner, when you click connection references, we now see all of the connections that I have in Power Automate and Power Apps in my environment. So presumably I can now, now use these in an automated plugin. Previously, I couldn't do that. I was only limited to external connectors in an instant plugin and SQL Server at that. Um, you also can see this in, in an instant plugin as well. So, so I'm assuming that this now works in both automated and instant plugins. And when I come in to choose a connection, say I want to add a row. I copy this snippet, paste it into my plugin and go from there. Now, um, I did try this before recording the uh, recording the video. I can't quite get it to work. I keep getting getting errors in the IntelliSense. So again, not sure if it's unsupported, waiting for some updates on the back end from Microsoft or just me not understanding it. But again, this is absolutely huge that we can call connections beyond SQL Server. So we've got a raft of, of different connections that we can, we can access, and it appears that we can access them from instant and automated plugins. So that's, that's what I've got for you right now. That's, that's the update from Microsoft, absolutely massive update from the team. I will be playing with this over the next few days to work out what it can do, some scenarios, um, and we'll be sharing my progress with it. If any of you are able to have a play with it and configure some stuff out that uh, that I've shown you that I've, I'm having struggles with in this demo, do hit me up on social. Really looking forward to to seeing what this can do and and learning together as part of the community. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Massive hats off to the Dataverse and PowerFX teams at Microsoft. Really excited to, uh, to see the progress with this, and I will be reporting back on my progress in due course. Thanks so much, everyone. Speak soon.